Okay. Uh, is the system on? Test. Seven o'clock. We will call this meeting to order. Tracy, can I get a roll call, please? Carrie Ellis? Nope. Justin Thomas? Yes. Tara Bowman? Here. Scott Hoff? Nope. Corey Jones? Here. Matt Mecca? Here. Michael Eddy? Here. Okay, there being a quorum, we will uh, continue with the reading of the district mission statement, which is to ensure that students excel with intellect and virtue inspired by innovative educators who engage and challenge each individual. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do we have any changes to the agenda as it stands now? There being none, I will call for a motion to approve the agenda as listed. Move to approve the agenda as listed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public comment. I'm sure these people from the concert are going to be coming in any minute now to give us their opinions on how we are doing. Nope. All right. Finance Committee Report, Justin. Uh, earlier we said we gave you a brief update there. Is it possible? Um, Carol put a little packet together that basically went over the numbers of how much money is in each fund and the checking account, um, which you all should have. Um, I think pretty straightforward. The discussion was transferring some of the money out of the actual checking account into the investment pool. Uh, and we will wait for the monies to come in in December and January and then sort through that to see how much money we should transfer over uh, given FDIC and the bank's uh, collateral behind the money in our checking account just to be on the safe side. And then we went through everything that was in the fund and we will contact those that have outside accounts that are kind of under the schools per oversight or uh, controlling, not necessarily controlling, but in the school's name, but funded by someone else. So that uh, barring whatever happens January 15th, we'll at least have a plan in place for those people to uh, get their money out or transition however, however they should deem necessary. And I believe that is it, unless I missed something, Carol? Thank you, Justin. Uh, just a quick question. Was there a concert tonight here and in Eagle? Yes. How do, that's a parental nightmare sometimes, isn't it? It's like there's okay. only so many evenings outside of Wednesdays. And we choose by a policy to avoid Wednesdays. So, therefore... That's what happens. And some of the complication also um, this year, and there's going to be the same on Thursday with the Boundary Appeal Board Thursday meeting, move to Eagle Elementary, and then a high school concert here. As a single parent, that would be rough. Um, administrator reports. She gave hers in finance. She gave hers in finance. Okay. No, oh, you're good. no, you're good. You're good. You're, good. You're, you're covered. All right, consent agenda can be handled with uh, one swift motion of a vote. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed? Move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Anything exciting about those new hires or retires or nothing? I just commend uh, 
Carrie Tim once again for being very creative in the hiring process. It's a unique um, circumstance, although I have subsequently found out that other districts obviously have vacancies that are coming in non-traditional times, meaning the summer. Really, at any point in time during the year, you can lose somebody. So it's not just us. Yes, Carrie is doing a fantastic job as a parent of somebody in a freshman. She's doing a really good job trying to keep things rolling there, and I appreciate that. Action items. Action item A, consider approval. Did you, you need to take a vote on the consent? See, this is why I shouldn't be doing this. Move to approve the consent agenda as, oh yeah, all those in favor? Can we, can we rewind the tape? <clears throat> Abstain. Why'd you do that? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Sorry about that. Action items. Action item A, consider approval of J1224 Seeds of Hope Professional Services Agreement for the 2019-2020 school year. Move to approve. Any questions or comments regarding that agreement, services agreement? Have we been using this stuff? Is this new? Beth, do you want to respond to that? It just helps them transfer into the community and learn some of those skills um, that they need to be successful with employment and just out in the community. And um, previously, our transition program has been going free of charge. Um, they're going to continue to go free of charge, but this year we have one particular student who's going for their day program and receiving more services, so that is a contracted service that's new this year. So we didn't We've worked with them in the past. We've sent students to them, but on a just a one day a week kind of basis, very minimally. This year, we are contracting with them for one particular student to help him transition with that 18 to 21 year old program. Um, they're able to provide some services that are really unique and good for him individually. So his IEP team had determined that this was an adequate placement for him moving forward so he can gain those skills. So that part of it is new. We've worked with SEEDS last year to provide some of that um, occasional opportunities for the students currently in the school system. What um, Total over the year, I'd have to quick calculate it out. I don't know off the top of my head. Because they're contracting us for an hourly rate for the student who's attending. So last year what we did, we had two, we had a couple students who were in that program and our teachers here in-house created a program to meet their needs. In talking with Jamie who runs Seeds of Hope last year, working with her and the student that we have this year, looking at what their needs are and what we have as far as staffing because that particular student is the only one in our 18 to 21 program and what's going to really be beneficial for him, then we decided that an outside placement not in our school building would be more appropriate for what he's looking for moving on. I mean, I get the moral obligation. I want to know about the legal obligation for us to pay down expenses. We're obliged to program for students through the age of 21. Friday the 20th, we're, yeah. um, well, it'd be 10, 10 months, so 
40 weeks, roughly. We're not obligated to provide an outside service. We're obligated to provide an appropriate educational program for certain students through the age of 21 by federal law. Right now, we don't have the means to provide him the education that he's entitled to up through age 21 in house. You, you're creating a, you would have to create a classroom of one for him with one teacher. Right. If there was five and it cost you 125,000, we would hire someone. Is that fair? Right. Enough? Right. I mean, if if I was looking at having three or five students in a program like that, absolutely, I wouldn't necessarily be looking at sourcing that out. Having something in house is something that we have more oversight on, and those kinds of things, absolutely. Is this going to take place here in our facility? It does not. It takes place so we have no on their location. We, have no we actually. We go over and um, meet with their staff over there, make sure that they're following the IEP obligations and things that we have to follow as well, making sure that that's being done. We follow up with all of the IEP services that are still in there. Um, we have different communication um, forms and things for not only the program, but for us and for parents so that all three are on the same page all of the time. There's constant follow-ups and emails, um, at least on a weekly basis, to make sure that we're maintaining oversight of what's still happening, because we still are responsible for the IEP implementation, making sure that those services are done, and making sure that that's all being followed. So we still have some oversight on it, um, as far as those kinds of things. We are providing transportation. I mean, you're looking at a teacher's salary, depending upon how many years' experience plus potential benefits. Because of it being one student, it's, it's more cost efficient right now. If we had three or four students, then I would consider having that, having some sort of program in house. Does that answer your question, Matt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right, so right now it just fits into our, our transportation schedule. Um, it's, it's very similar to last year, except now he's just being transported instead of to school to, you know, see the program. So. You know, situations that 
people in the in the gymnasium or sitting in the comments section that are these he all these hearings they don't they have no clue of all these situations that come up and you, know, you can't just do a two million dollars divided by 600 student equation it's not it's not that simple it's not that simple okay uh, call for the vote all those in favor of the seeds of hope professional services agreement say aye, aye. aye. opposed motion passed action item B consider approval of voluntary contract reduction for HS high school math teacher Second. Any questions or comments regarding this? He had a full-time teaching schedule. I believe you have a copy of the letter in your packet. The reduction is voluntary. Uh, yeah, so yes, and maintaining the AP course. Correct. Twenty-five percent, right? There's a one course and then uh, preparatory time slash uh, ability to serve as a resource for those students in that AP course. Yeah. No, and he. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passed. District administrators report. Steve. Thank you very much. Um, wanted to make note that uh, prior to the Thanksgiving uh, holiday, each of the buildings held uh, food drives that were very, very successful. You probably saw some of the um, press release and some of the positives that resulted from the foods that were gathered and then distributed to uh, various food pantries in the area and families in need. I want to thank um, all of our students and staff for their involvement in that that process. Very, uh, very kind of them to be giving to one another. Uh, Bridging Smiles program. Uh, thank you to Lisa Jensen and Beth Jones for setting that up. We had talked about that um, several months ago, and now the the program is beginning to um, be made available. There was actually a Connect Five message that went out um, today announcing a couple of those dates. You might recall that there's some screening done and then there's an opportunity for um, some students to be able to receive services uh, through that program for uh, dental health. Um, mentioning Lisa, um, Lisa is going to be transitioning to a new role at Fort Healthcare with the onset of the new calendar year. Um, she does have a replacement um, already lined up um, to serve our district for our local school nursing needs, but I did want to make sure we acknowledge Lisa for her four years of service. It was a really, really good relationship that we had. Um, and I have every reason to believe that um, Lisa's replacement, Bridget, will be equal to the task um, as Lisa wa was, but we certainly thank Lisa. Um, the uh, middle and high school uh, winter athletic season is, is up and running. Um, for those, a uh, number of games and matches have recently begun. Um, I just gave you an update uh, in my report on some of the staffing uh, coaching changes that had occurred from uh, last meeting in November. Uh, would like to make a um, notification that on this Friday night between the JV1 and the varsity boys game, there'll be the official dedication of the Duane Wild Court, the high school gymnasium. So if you're available and would like to attend, I'm sure you'd be welcome to do so. Um, uh, as Tara alluded to earlier, this is a very busy and hectic season um, with either winter holiday concerts having been scheduled and already held or some yet scheduled and to be held. Um, it does create a, a bit of a difficulty with all the other events and activities that are going on and I certainly would acknowledge that it does present a challenge at, on occasion to our families and we throw in the Boundary Appeal Board gatherings and it's one more wrinkle to that. Uh, dilemma, but again, music department folks want to acknowledge them. This is, uh, in addition to spring, kind of their on season, so to speak, and so um, kudos to them. 
The 2020 spring election uh, information is included in your packet as well. We have three seats that will be open on um, our school board. Um, I wanted to acknowledge and thank Tracy for helping to manage this process, including posting the necessary notification in our official paper, which um, she did and was done. Um, if a primary is necessary, and a primary would be held if there's one, at least one more than double the amount of vacant seats, that would be held the middle of February on the 18th, and then the spring election would be held on Tuesday, April the 7th. So as a reminder um, to incumbents, either you need to file a, a non-candidacy notice, which is due on or before December the 27th at 5 o'clock, um, if you choose to run again, I believe papers have been made available to you, and the filing deadline for those is January the 7th. Um, WASB Delegate Assembly um, is held on Wednesday the 22nd. Scott serves as your delegate. Um, as has been the case, we get the information the day of our December meeting, so I did make a hard copy um, for you uh, and put it up by your nameplate. Um, we can talk about these more at the January board meeting since there'll be plenty of time. And I will include an electronic version in my board notes to you for the January meeting. Um, that'll give Scott some direction on how to represent our board. Monday, January the 20, not the 22nd as noted, but the 20 is uh, next in-service day. We're going to do a run, hide, fight refresher. Um, as you know, unfortunately, local news relative to Waukesha and Oshkosh, um, some violence, um, some shootings, et cetera. Um, our staff has turned over appreciably since we did the full training several years ago. So the leadership team felt it would be a really good idea to have a refresher, um, not only as a reminder for those that did take part in that training, but also for everyone else that's new to our staff. Um, and then one final note that there is a Thursday of this week, uh, December the 12th, moved to Eagle Elementary School's gymnasium, the next scheduled meeting of the Boundary Appeal Board, and we have disseminated that official agenda from um, the Department of Public Instruction already. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, any announcements or board comments? I am up for re-election and have submitted my paperwork for re-election, but will gladly withdraw if uh, there are other people that want to jump on this table. Any other announcements? All right. Uh, there being no, f uh, we have a regular board meeting, 7 p.m. Tuesday, January 14th, right here in this very same room. And if there being no further business, I will uh, accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.